we appreciate you being uh, back to us um, with uh, this our show, Human Human Architecture on Think Tech Hawaii. And this happens to be our 310th show. You are our accumulated viewer, which you see down there. And that's all, uh, sorry, Michael and Jay, without promotion. So with shameful non-promotion, just promoting itself. Um, that's how we are. Uh, and um, so we're going to go back to the ninth time talking about Lahaina. Um, and it is um, us uh, membering Lahaina on top of what you DeSoto Brown in, uh, when you are not with us, you're in your Bishop Museum uh, up there as a historian. So welcome back to Soto. And we have uh, you, Martin Ancelini, back with us here for this. So this, this is us going back. And you, DeSoto, had been, we said it was four times remembering Lahaina and uh, both from the archives and also from you having been going there. And now, Correct, that's right. Now we're in multiple uh, times looking at what could one do. And starting out on this slide, I just want to put into perspective. So you, the audience, when you want to see the whole narrative, you got to go back to the recent shows. And here we basically show you what we are not talking about, which also one could do, maybe one should do. I pulled this from the website that Bandit Pinistakan had put together this exhibit of Tropic Hearing, which the website, website features two approaches that could have been done. One is using two by four as the all American uh, system version of the uh, uh, pre contact sticks of your ancestors, De Soto. Correct. But he says uh, the mindset is the same, the neo indigenous, you just go with what you have, and then you have uh, one wrench and one connection, and you put this together uh, in uh, it all fits on one flatbed pickup truck, his port one, and then you go there and put it together. Or, as we've been reporting on a couple of times, you take cargo steel, which is around shipping containers, and you stack them on top of them, as in this cyclone cargo container project. So these are all suggestions and more, many more, uh, that are based on uh, using uh, what you have from scratch. And please get us right. Uh, we appreciate the intention of what we see at the very bottom right there, which is people who mean well, but they don't any and any different as to import things from half around the world, where I am from, from Hungary, and they uh, import these, uh, you know, folding out boxes that bring shelter. Yet, yes, which is good, but they bring too much. And they also bring back what was not good, which is the missionary moomooing. And I compared it with an image of a winter coat. You bring a winter coat here, which people in the Ukraine need now again, season-wise. But we don't need here. We just need an umbrella. And so also Bundet has uh, kindly given me, uh, trying to keep me hydrated, this San Pellegrino bottle, which I also, you know, I drank and I brought it with me, which is really nice. But I have to reuse this now all the time because you know this is this is a lot of embodied carbon in it to make glass is melting sand. Now I have to reuse it. So this comes from Italy, if you haven't known. And also the soto at the bottom left, you reported on that uh, quite excessively recently. This is the new rail system, which again the train comes where this comes from from Italy. And I just drove there, and I want to throw out this picture here of the rail in the back as an all hermetic invasive thing that also already started to break down. It isn't quite perfected, right? And we keep going back to my, to our PIing mobile, which is more exotic, right? It's also from at the other end of the world, from Germany and old Mercedes, but it is a convertible. So it's easy breezy. I, you know, make no sense to even have that car over there for the few months in the summer not worth it because I have to have the hard top on all the time, right? And so that is just 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 the points we try to we try to make um, about about things. This can also be the Arbor Day week um, show because Arbor Day is around. Arbor Day comes from my home away from home, Nebraska. This is where the Morton family that we know from their salt more from later generations has started this you know, thing to 
to basically plant trees in the world. And the former, supposedly former owner of this car, which is former First Lady Jean Ariyoshi, uh, has, uh, you know, just like Jimmy Carter has done a lot, uh, you know, during and past her reign, which is uh, having a million trees planted. And I just watched, you know, this, I think this is a show quote of, and uh, a quote of, of public uh, radio having interviewed here, where she said, well, we had a million people at that time, now we have more. So I suggested to plant a million trees, which they basically did, right? So we, we just want you, the audience, to join us, you know, in thinking beyond what you see, but actually, you know, you look at what you see and, and make up your mind about it and take a critical position. Getting us to the next slide, because this, this is what we did when we first met Martin, right? And you want to uh, say a little bit what that was and what we looked at? Yeah, is uh, uh, we we should absolutely talk about uh, you you the easy breezy. No, we we see it in this image. No, the the Hawaiian weather in general uh, don't requires uh, to be enclosed. No, uh, we need we 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 now know that uh, most of the of the casualties that happened in Lahaina were because of, and what, what that happened normally with fires are not for the fire itself, but, but for the smoke. And the, the smoke uh, uh, is dangerous when it is enclosed. No? Even vernacular construction, uh, tropical constructions, they were closed with palm or, 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 or straw or different uh, uh, vegetable materials. That, that we're breathing. Now we cannot make this hermetic architecture as the, the San Pellegrino and the metro uh, 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 wagons because this is what is dangerous. So if we leave the air passing, uh, of course we are saving tons and tons of, of, of carbon uh, uh, produced uh, in, in, this, uh, in this local context, but also we are generating safer architectures, no? Yeah, and we, uh, the very, the large picture, picture at the bottom right is in our favorite mid-century modern master, mid and late century modern master, Ron Lindgren, late partner of Edward Killingsworth. And this is the Hali Kolani. And uh, next slide, uh, DeSoto, share with us the update on Ron. Well, Ron is, um, our friend Ron is a retired architect and we've been friends with him for some years now and he is responsible for the entire refurbishment and redevelopment of the Holly Kulani Hotel right in the middle of Waikiki. He worked for the company that created the Kahala Hilton Hotel and in both cases, uh, what, what they ended up with was this beautiful free open space classical types of attitudes and how they did it, but still a lot of openness, a lot of livability, and, and some things that we really admire. Of course, that's not all that he did. Well, our friend Ron is now retired. He's getting elderly. He is uh, working on his finances, and he is living in a wonderful house that's in Long Beach, California, that is just perfect for him architecturally. Um, and again, is historic too, coming from the 1960s. And he's working on that and we're hoping to help him out in a variety of ways as he gets older. And we're hoping to, I won't go into the specifics because that's his business, but still we want to be helping him to live a better life and not only in architecturally nice places, but also financially secure as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, this is Ron's, Ron's, We've got a lot still to learn from Ron, let's put it that way. Yeah, and and again, wh when you now uh, watch the show and you have been, uh, you know, hit hard by, lost everything, hopefully, you know, not your life, but otherwise you couldn't listen to us. You might say, hey, you bohemians, don't you have any other problems as talking about your, your luxury problems? We want to, I want to make sure, and I will allow myself, hopefully it's okay for you, Ron, watching us as one of our most loyal viewers, to talk about because what your your life has a lot to do with uh, Hawaii, with its architecture, and with what to do and what not to do. And what you actually did, Ron, is for me the utmost you know hero uh, because you have never 
done anything that other other Howleys have been doing ever since Cook came, and they wanted to uh, steal pieces of uh, DeSoto Your Island, uh, because that's not what one should do, steal other people's land, right? And uh, so Ron has not done that uh, versus most other architects, even the ones that we admire, that we like, they have said shop here and they bought. Even Pete Wimberley built himself a house, a beautiful house, a lovely house. But maybe it's, uh, you know, this is your land, the soda of your people, and there was no land ownership. So there is no such thing. Ron always went back home to Long Beach, California. And the house he bought that you mentioned that we did uh, many shows about um, is not what he even designed. It's the best compliment. It was inspired. It's a track home. It's a developer's house that was inspired by his work. Best compliment you can ever get. If, if you inspire the mainstream with your avant-garde, that's the best you can do. And he never, he just took, you know, as profit what he needed to shelter himself, not, make, not making anything more, which puts him in the place that he can't even come back and visit the lovely places he designed as a Hali Kalani because he can afford it. In fact, he can't even afford a flight here. And that's why he's personally taking care of himself uh, we're proud of you, Ron, because you talked the neighbor into of your duplex into uh, you selling your half to him, and then he allows you to stay there for a lifetime. Uh, thank you, uh, new owner, and that gives you more cash liquidity. But hopefully, he uses it, Ron, to come back to us because we need you here. There's an article in the Star Advertiser that we all read that's called called Home Sharing Hawaii. So one of the problems of the terror of both a tropical and temperate territorialization, as we call it, that it isolates people, right? So Ron, we want you about next to us as the good times we had with you at the Docomomo Symposium, where you were a keynote speaker, but more importantly about all the good times we had before and after, because we need you around, like 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 Rich, uh, you know, is has been taking around just yesterday to Soto uh, and the days before and him playing piano at an art event. That's the way to involve people, involve people who are the wisest, uh, rather than shoving them away, locking them away, enslaving them in the golden cages and best case of real estate, as we call it. And this gets us to the commune, the communal idea that we've been talking about, and that you are revitalizing, Martine, that you are giving a renaissance. And, you know, next slide, because we have to talk about touchy things also on our side, because there might actually be a problem in Maui that has to do with embracing uh, things with the best intention, not just like the people shipping in these unfoldable metal boxes, but actually then also not just having the best intention, but also doing the best. And this is here, Ron's masterpiece of the Kapalua Bay Hotel that was built in the late 70s. I have to correct myself on previous show. We said mid, uh, it was in 78, and they tore it down in 2006. And you might say, well, because it wasn't you know, cool enough anymore. Well, this lady in the New York Times, as just one example, wrote how cool it was, and it, it could have, should have easily been kept. And uh, recently, we uh, are recognizing how great Akashi Anbi was, uh, a similar thing, next slide. This is the Maui Prince Hotel. Uh, in fact, what it was from the 80s. And this is shame on us, DeSoto. It got torn down when I was already here and I was a founding board member of Doko Momo and I didn't do nothing uh, to prevent this. They tore this down a few years ago. I think it was 2018. And I leave it up to you guys to judge it. How does this come across to you? And this gets hauled into the whole issue of, you know, hotel rooms and should you have people staying there and living there? Does it keep away the... But, I mean, pairing something like... Everyone talks about, you know, um, um, uh, uh, gray energy, talks about circular economy and ecology. Sorry, something, both things, both places, hotels that have, you know, not even been, you know, 30 years or around it. Tearing these down, I want to have, I don't want to quiz your, I'm getting very emotional about that, as you can tell. So have, share your emotions about it, please, now, based on well, what the, you see. What the you Maui see. Prince was somewhat controversial when it was first built because it was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And in fact, the road to get to it was very undeveloped. 
So there were a lot of people who complained about, you know, you're, you're going into pristine landscape and building this, this huge concrete uh, structure. I actually visited it a first a few times. I don't believe I stayed there, but I I, I gave a, a presentation to the guests at some point. And again, what you see, which we all admire, is the openness and the fact that the air flows through this. And yes, it is concrete, but at the same time, it is not a monolithic concrete monster that's entirely enclosed and uses nothing but a tremendous amount of energy to keep it cool inside so that is part of its uh, that's part of the appeal but the other thing that that of course we must mention too is that architecture and buildings do not exist in a vacuum they exist for people with people people live in them work in them and there are economic factors and unfortunately and martin you and i have discussed this a great deal economic factors will be used against buildings sometimes to justify their destruction even if they are architecturally distinguished, and even if the whole process of demolition and rebuilding is going to consume a great deal of energy. And let's so, go to the next slide for that because yeah, it illustrates and, and well. Here, what here is said. the picture that we're going to see of that, of, of demolition. So um, there are lots of reasons to preserve things, and there and, are lots of reasons to build things that are environmentally conscious and that also, as Martine just said, that are open to the elements that are not only safer, but better and easier to live in, more pleasant to live in, and again, are, and economical too. It's, it's yeah. economically wiser to do that rather than to go through the entire process of destruction. And Martin, you and I have discussed this before, the whole, the whole concept of, well, it is no longer economically viable, so we must destroy it is not necessarily really the truth. There are times people have other motivations and they'll claim Money is the root of it. Well, okay, I, that's well, enough for me. And, I'll, and before, I'll stop be, now. before I let you jump in, Martin, I'm just going to quickly say the sort of uh, the initial sort of you know you stepping up and trying to and you know immerse yourself in the thinking of the ones who wanted it go right to say it was it was remote. Uh, sorry, give us a break because so was the Kahala Hilton. It totally flopped when it was built. And I'm now basically retraining myself into a business person, teaching a class of resort architecture with your support, your guys' support, and Ron's support, and Don's support. Thank you guys all about resort architecture, Tim333. So again, the, the, the people we're teaching then are the upcoming new leaders in hospitality design. And we got to let them know that Kahala Hilton was saved by them, by a clever manager who turned the dilemma into a virtue in reaching out to the people who love remoteness, which is all the celebrities, all the royals in the world, and all the movie stars who didn't want to be paparazzi in the center of Waikiki. So you just have to be smart and clever. And there are other, so that's how Killings were started out. And with Ron, they ended with Larry Stricker as the design architect. Two shows are out there by us about it, the Ihilani, which is now the Four Seasons. So really give us a break. I mean, they are all talking about rebranding. If there's a will, there's a way. But there was no there was no will here, obviously. And and how does this resonate with you? I find it, Martin, I ironic that you see this is green architecture, as people like to call it, because what uh, you uh, uh, Ron always did the beautiful planner trough uh, balustrade integrated. There is actually nature living in architecture here. So again, coming back to this, this is only green on the surface and not in its substance. <laughs> and I have to eat this baby here that Ethel gave me that I already had last week because this is real, the real deal. I can't eat it and I should, right? So what we see on these lanais is also real green. So I stop here and give it to you, Martin. No, just just uh, to complement this, the the fact of belonging that we were also talking this in these uh, following uh, uh, shows is probably a hotel where people of course there is people that have an appropriation to these hotels because they work there or because they go often every summer every every winter every year uh, but uh, going back to Lahaina what is uh, keeping Lahaina alive is the 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 people that still makes Lehaina Lehaina, the, the, the remembering uh, and the belonging of a site. No? Uh, if sites really generate belonging, 
uh, on a community level, also in an individual level, uh, peop uh, uh, spaces will survive, no? Doesn't matter if they are uh, uh, made out of wood or even uh, spaces that uh, as a tree, no? This banyan tree that it's, it is not a built space, uh, uh, it is a space, it is a place that will generate a, a, a meaning or that generates meaning, that implies meaning for some people. And this is what will Lehaina uh, be, uh, uh, keep alive. No? Yeah, and go to the next slide here. This is actually then um, shockingly the proof of evidence for your theory, De Soto, that you said, you know, the reason for all this stupidity, irrationality, not acting as smart as nature, but stupid as human mankind, which we also said, you know, our agenda is responsible. We are out doing the wars. We are out killing, you know, elderly and, and, and women and children currently in the Ukraine, out there in the, in, uh, in the Middle East, right? We're, we're unfortunately doing that. And it's often driven by greediness. And this is here again, we, you know, on when we try to keep our spirits up to Soto, we say, okay, if you tear something down that is already really good, wow, you got to replace it with something even better, which is really hard. But show quote at the bottom right has not happened at all with uh, replacing Ron's beautiful Kapalua Bay. In fact, the opposite. This is what it's been replaced with. This was like a, a poop, you know, a, a piece of poop uh, in its really most ugly way. Um, and so uh, that's what's there now. And they call it the, uh, it's too small, but you see it there. It has this weird name. The, um, it's, my picture is too small, but the, something with in front of Kapalua Bay, the, mon the montage. The montage. What kind of a montage? What does this one to say? Well, the montage is that it's not that the Kapalua Bay was a budget Motel 6 hotel, which you don't even have here on the island, right? Something cheap budget. No, it was already a pretty high-end hotel. But of course, that was not enough. One is never satisfied. Greediness means I want more, I want more, I want more. So what I found here now is what is now is actually the fifth, lar the fifth most expensive hotel slash resort in the world, right? That's what it's all about. And it has big rooms like suites and it has kitchens in there, right? So... Well, that's what these rich people have, uh, 1500 per night. That's what people have already where they are. Why do you want that where you go, right? This is really absurd and obscene, uh, horrible. Besides all the, like, the gray energy loss and carbon footprint, you know, wasting all this stuff, it, it's also a cultural waste because, again, Ron brought tropical exotic flair here. He acted like we said many times to Soto as your ancestors were thinking. And he did this as a haole that never robbed your land. I mean, that, that's why, Ron, you're, I can't repeat this more often. You know, you are on all levels the most responsible as you should have been. So now instead of uh, Takashi Anbi, which, uh, you know, it probably, you know, killed him because he died too early at the young age of 60. Around that time, uh, they actually built, um, you know, uh, he built uh, the, the, the Prince Maui. And he probably now turns around in his grave if he sees what's done here. And, you know, this is, again, architecturally, there, there's this Deroos architect. I don't know if I pronounce this the right way. And he's actually, you know, doing architecturally versus what they did instead of you there, bottom right again. Uh, they, he he does well, and he does, you know, if you do research, he's trained as a carpenter, and he does pretty, you know, nice, crisp, and, and sexy things, also tropical exotic. But, um, again, on the expense of tearing down things, and, and they also were part of the team of renovating um, uh, Larry Stricker's Ihilani into the Four Seasons now on uh, at Koalia up there out, um, out west, right? And they um, they recognize what the Killingsworth was, so they know. But, you know, then they say outdated. And I don't let this uh, count as an excuse because there is no such thing. you got to educate the visitors first and foremost and say, you know, you might think this is outdated what you're staying in, but instead it is vintage. And that's what we have complimented the management of the Halikolani because that is 
actually the last one of the killings worth and your prime piece run where the management is smart enough to understand what vintage is and that they can justify to the customers that it doesn't need to be renovated, but just touched up to keep it fresh, right? Yeah, and I was going to just say that the photographs that you showed of your field trip to Waikiki, you also Go showed the Royal Hawaiian three. Hotel. Mm -hmm. and, and that, uh, the Royal Hawaiian and the Hale Kulani, both from the 1920s, 1930s, were built before air conditioning, and they are both meant to be trade wind cooled, and they both survive like that. Unfortunately, those those buildings have survived, which again, are easy breezy. Yeah, and so we just wanted to have this show next week. We're gonna wrap up and we let mainly you talk, Martin, but we thought we needed to make clear what we're not doing, uh, what also one maybe should do as tropic hearing, but also what some, you know, unfortunate legacy uh, and some of the, the psyche of there in Maui uh, might might actually be some fear, uh, being afraid of tropical exotic, which again, one does not have to be if the mindset is right, as Ron, you have proven so well, and you, Takashi, not with us anymore physically, but spiritually also have proven well. And I think one could have beautifully, you know, uh, retrofitted and maybe repurposed these these hotels, and maybe building some of their, you know, greedy lust for high end luxury somewhere else, or better not, if you ask me. But that I guess disqualifies me for the course I'm supposed to teach because I'm believing in a more cultivated capitalism, and that I won't give up. Because again, you run, you are the hero. You showed us how to do that. And we have to figure out with the emerging generation, both architecturally, as thanks to you, Martin, and then from the business side, the PIM people, how to continue to do that in the future. And for that, we will go back uh, to that next week in wrapping up this year and uh, showing your fantastic proposal, uh, Martin, that I believe is, that's why I threw this in, in the tradition of these two projects, but differently. They're still based upon as sort of a contemporary, uh, you know, mainstream paradigm of hotel rooms and stuff like that. But they at least did that fairly well. And you're going above and beyond that in a, in a, in a fantastic way. So let's uh, wrap this up and conclude that with your additional many thoughts on that. Uh, sorry, we didn't get you to talk about it that much mm -hmm. today, but next week it's all yours. We promise, I promise, because mm -hmm. I talk the most. Uh, because I get so emotional about things. All right, so wrapping this up, uh, see you next week for the final fireworks of you, Martin. And until then, please stay exotically tropical, tropical exotic as you, Ron, keep teaching us in the best way. Bye, Ron, and everyone else.